Hi guys, Rene here and welcome back to the workshop. Today we have prepared another video for our series with my coach, Arek. Hello everyone. And it's going to be directly related to the last one because in the previous uh, episode we've been talking about and showing you uh, workouts that should help you with your time trialing. Now if you start doing those, then you should very quickly realize uh, what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, in terms of your general fitness and also specifically for time trialing. Uh, so, Arek, my question would be, how do you actually measure or quantify and decide what you need to work on the most and uh, uh, how to improve your strengths even further and probably balance the whole power profile as much as you can? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that uh, to become very good and very efficient time trialist, uh, I think we have to aim for achieving as high as FTP as possible, as high as 60 minutes as possible, and also in other parameters, maybe without sprint. It is also sometimes important, especially going out of the corner, but the most important is to have your strengths balanced with your weaknesses so that we want to get your weaknesses as high as possible without uh, compromising with your strength. So, for example, uh, I see many athletes who has uh, quite good FTP and five minute efforts. So on power profile in training peaks, you see it here. This is five minute profile and 20 minute profile. And uh, most of the times it's connected with very low neuromuscular power. So the spring and the uh, anaerobic power, so everything around one minute to, to two minutes, 30 seconds. So similar what we see here in Ronnie's example. Uh, so that what we want to achieve is to build up that anaerobic power and build up also FTP so that uh, he would be uh, faster on time trial and also more uh, effective. Because for example, when, when he had his best 20 minutes around 5.5 uh, watts per kilo. Uh, so he could uh, beat it not like 20%, but around 5 to 10%, which is also very, very good and very high. But in the same way, if his one minute was uh, around 8 watts per kilo, which is not very, very much for such a class and category of rider, he could beat one minute for, let's say, 20%, let's say. I don't say that it is easy, but it is possible. And what it will improve, it will improve uh, his overall speed during the time trial uh, because he will tolerate the lactate faster, faster remove the lactate, faster going out of the corner, faster doing the short uphills which over the course of, let's say, 40, 50 kilometers uh, on the rolling hills terrain will be crucial because sometimes when you aim for uh, the win, then on top three, you have the differences of few to 20 seconds, 30 seconds over such a curse. And when you add all those things, it's, it's uh, very, it, it plays a big role. And what I, what I do, for example, so uh, when we have such a weakness, let's say everything around 30 seconds to two minutes, I am aiming to do such workouts which are improving this. So, for example, we have here the workout which uh, Ronnie had done. And what I am doing with the weaknesses is that almost every time I am doing it uh, when athlete is fresh. So, for example, after two days of recovery, which was here, uh, so for the crucial workout such like this, he has TSB on the plus, so he is fresh. And what we can see right here, it was on the trainer, so it was very tough workout. But generally we can see working on the uh, lactate tolerance in 40-20 seconds interval. So 40 seconds you go very hard and 20 seconds very easy and you are doing it 10 times. Uh, into into series on the road it's uh, easier to complete than on the trainer because on the from the first second you have a very high uh, resistance 
but uh, end of the road it's different. But mentally you are improving. And for example, when I see uh, also such weakness as uh, generating anaerobic power, so let's say everything above 120 percent of FTP during FTP, this is the good workout to aim for. Uh, so this is, for example, three times 20 minutes FTP with bursts. So it was the burst here, like around one minute, uh, 3.15, uh, 303. It was also on TT bike first time. So we can see also that during the next series, the power was lowering. So it is very important what we were covering last time also with Ronnie, that you complete your hardest workouts in time trial position and now on uh, Ronnie's setup the, the time trial position is very demanding so sustaining such powers is also really demanding but when we will be uh, training in, in such a position such wattage it will be easier to compete for the uh, event so so this is the one way to see the weaknesses and the second way also is to use this diagram which is peak power and uh, peak power, this is the power which uh, athlete was sustaining for the uh, maximum during uh, different periods of time. So here is five seconds, 10, 20, one minute up to three hours. And when we see uh, such, uh, such great deep deepness of the, of the curve, it means that uh, here is the uh, field to improve. So, for example, for uh, 12 seconds for such athlete is quite uh, high. The power for uh, for five seconds and 20, 12 seconds, it's it's not going down very fast. But here, for example, for um, uh, 12 seconds to 20, uh, 30, and one minute is it's getting uh, much lower. So, for example, it will be. Uh, crucial for this athlete, especially in the peak uh, period, to work on such uh, on such times. So everything above around twenty seconds to uh, to one minute. Uh, here, for example, it is uh, very well established. So from ten minutes to thirty minutes, it's very good. So it it means that on FTP effort, these athletes work really well. And on endurance here, we don't, we didn't really do the test, but uh, also it doesn't go uh, much, much lower than, uh, than, than here, for example. So this will be the point. Uh, to, to show you another example, I will show you I am of much less uh, condition as, as Ronnie, but, but I had improved last time, what you can see right here. <laughs> but it's, it's not so high. Uh, but generally, it's similar, so that I have quite high FTP and uh, aerobic power. I think those was uh, not good working of the trainer. So it was 360, so probably I am 340, something like this. But generally, the tendency is, is going uh, up. And what I wanted to achieve also uh, was improve my one minute and 30 second power. So. I had achieved it doing such workouts which I showed you, and we we can see it here. And so that uh, I I don't also have the uh, muscles uh, as as Ronnie has, uh, which are able to generate such a high power in uh, short time. So I cannot improve, for example, up to here the world class or domestic pro as training fix say, but I can improve it uh, a lot. So that when I was starting. For example, here it was last year, uh, February, I had maximum over so one minute, very low, like around 450, 470. And I was improving it uh, with the with the workouts and I had uh, gained almost 600 um, during the winter. So so in generation, uh, in, in January. Uh, so so this is it. And, and for example, here, this is another power curve curve this is mine and we can see here also that i have very big drop from 30 seconds to two minutes so this is this is also my uh, weakest point and this is what uh, what i would train in such an athlete who has 
such a profile. So everything between 30 seconds to uh, two minutes. And uh, always, always remember that uh, all we want to achieve in time trial with working on weaknesses and strength is to generate higher speed. So don't forget during such workouts to also uh, work on your on your setup, on your position, and on your average speed because this is the uh, the crucial part. I was talking a lot, so please, uh, Ronnie, uh, I am giving the voice to you. Maybe, maybe tell us also about your strengths and weaknesses and how we work on them and how you feel they are improving, if you feel it. Uh, well, to sum it up uh, a little bit, many people think that really it's just about the FTP, but as we have discussed now, uh, in order to go as fast as possible, you can't really have very weak areas. Okay, there are always going to be uh, some disproportions uh, in your power profile, but but still, uh, you need to have it uh, as best as you can have, uh, basically. And uh, I've known for a long time that these short efforts are not my thing. Uh, there was one season where I did uh, many road races, uh, but really like uh, around 20 even, and also cyclocross in the winter. And I think that's, uh, that's really the season that you pointed out, where I had the biggest five minute power, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really helped uh, with, the, with the FTP part as well, and I had some good results. So it really just shows that you can't focus on one, one singular thing. Uh, yeah. and, also, and also the training is more interesting, more enjoyable, because you are working on different parts every, every time. So you are not only doing FTP, FTP, FTP and aerobic, but you also work on uh, shorter uh, durations, which is enjoyable, I think. Yeah, for sure. It's it's not repetitive. Uh, it doesn't get monotonous. And uh, we also touched on the subject of the position. Uh, because when I compare uh, my power numbers, when I started time trialing, uh, if you look at it just without context, uh, then you see that over these last three, four years, the the FTP or the long duration power hasn't really increased, but my speed has increased a lot. And that's exactly down to the position uh, because it doesn't matter if you generate 30, 40 watts more if your position is 60 watts slower. So that's, that's I think, also many people should consider. And because, for example, now uh, I'm still doing around 300 watts, but I'm going 48 almost kilometers per hour instead of 45 that I did a couple of years ago. So uh, it's not just about the absolute numbers, but also in relation to that, in relation to how aerodynamic you can be, because it's always going to be much harder to, to produce that kind of power on, on a really tough position than on a road bike, for example, or even on a climb. So even if people compare these directly, these efforts, it's, it's not really comparable. So I think that's, that should be also pointed out. And doing these harder efforts definitely helps uh, with sustaining those higher powers in the extreme position. So I think that's, uh, that's what I'm experiencing also, right now. Yeah. And also riding a lot in TT position. Like I will show your last training when you had spent four hours on TT position. Uh, and it, it was it it was it was shown previously, but generally you can you can see how uh, how was the wattage corresponded to average speed. So Ronnie had done one seventy kilometers with forty one point five kilometer per hour with half rate one fifty five because it was also the the exercises and the normalized power was two twenty three. So it is not a lot. It it would be average speed six watts per kilo and around 3.8 uh, watts per kilo normalized power and you are going with such a high speed. Uh, so you can, you can see how working on bike position, on setup uh, and, and such things, along with good power of course, is giving the very high uh, average speed. Because normally if we would go with such a, a speed on the normal bike and let's say only a basic setup, it would be like 
36, 37 kilometers per hour with the same effort, I think. Yes, the biggest difference that I was really focusing on um, is my head position because it doesn't, you can have the bike set up in the completely same way you can't or you don't have to change a single bolt but you can do a huge difference just by how you how you position yourself and how you hold your head and your back uh, so that's also adding a bit of a difficulty also some people with this particular workout pointed out that the speed is high because it's super flat yes but I chose the terrain that is as flat as possible because on the flat you have to hold the position if you want to go far. On the climb you can, you can relax, you can sit up and just do a bit more power, it's easier. But uh, yeah, on the flat you really have nowhere to go, yeah. You can see it in uh, that position. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not what most riders ride like uh, every day, so this is also part of the reason why we are we are able to go that little bit faster but it's something that you need to train a lot it's what took me basically years uh, four years since i started time trialing to to get into something like this so yeah. it, and sometimes sometimes when you you know sometimes you are thinking about what to put your budget on because everyone has the limited budget let's say maybe few of us have unlimited one but most of us has limited budget, so I would rather go for improving your bike position with the like aero coach or wind tunnel uh, or anything like this than putting a uh, few more thousand euros into the bike. Of course, it is also important, but doing such a position or, or maybe not like this from the very beginning, but even improving your position 10% will give you higher speed than investing, let's say, to new time trial bike. Yeah, that's, that's sure. Um, I can give you a good example about this. When we have tested the new super deep uh, 100 millimeter front wheel that you can see on the picture, at 45 kilometers per hour, it's 2.5 watts compared to a more regular uh, size rim. But the changes we have made, just small changes to the position, that was 15 watts. So it's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And when and when you when you you know have 15 watts here, two watts here, two watts there, it it builds up up to 30, 40 watts. So now you don't have to have RTP of 350. It's enough 310, and you are going the same speed. Yes. Yeah, so these little things definitely add up, and there are countless of these small optimizations that you can do uh, but I think we'll talk about that in a separate video because it's a it's a very interesting and uh, a lengthy topic as well yeah so I would I would sum it up also due to the training part but uh, still remember that the things which you uh, are not enjoying on the training are the things which will improve you the most uh, so, for example, when you don't like to do FTP on flat or accelerations uh, or 30 second maximal effort, and uh, it's taking you hard time mental, it's giving you hard time mentally. Then, when you will focus on this and you will improve, uh, it will give you the biggest advantages. Because, for example, when you when you like to do like let's say 10 minute FTP uh, on hills, and you do it every time because you are enjoying it that you like to do also like five hours uh, long rides which is good and you can enjoy it but if you are looking for improving your average speed on time trial bike uh, it's important to train your weaknesses and it will also boost your uh, your mental uh, side because when you force yourself self to do it and you see improvements in your weaknesses you will also uh, build up your mental strength, which is which is also important during time trial. Yeah, it definitely feels very rewarding uh, after you complete such workouts. So yeah. uh, it gives you a good boost for sure, mentally and physically, of course. Yeah. So I would 
sum it up with the quote that satisfaction is sometimes more important than the pleasure which you are taking off, for example, here from the workouts which you like the most. Of course, it's good to train them, but also remember to address your weaknesses. So it would be something to remember from our today blog. Yeah, so I think uh, we have put some good information out there, Arek. So thank you a lot for your time. And uh, thank you very much. we'll see each other in the next one. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, bye.